Hello YouTube, it's 007 once again with another edition of Run Double Run 007 Reads. Tonight's fan fiction is another supposedly extremely depressing story. And, uh, why am I looking forward to this? So let me just bring up the story. It is taking forever. There we go. Oh boy. This is a... Alright, so this is a, another sad fiction entitled Final Dream of a Philly. It is another, of course, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic fan fiction. And, oh boy. This. This is going. This is going to be something. Alright. This particular fiction is loading differently than the other, so. Excuse me while I display my incompetence. Okay, I can't get the story to load. Give me one second, please. Okay, just after I pause it, it loads, so... So here we go, this is chapter one. And, uh... I take one final deep breath, and here we go. Final Dreams of a Philly, Chapter 1. <clears throat> the moon was chillingly beautiful. The young Philly watched it silently. A rare moment of reverence for her, for her normally exuberant personality. A chill ran through her tiny frame, and she pulled the thin material closer around her fledging wings, trying to trap her frail body heat beneath the scarlet cape and emblem. A smile pulled at the corner of her mouth as her lavender eyes caught sight of the insignia. The symbol glittered in the moonlight, tendrils of frost having begun to collect on the surface of the cape. Winter was coming, and soon. Her eyes fell away from the frost as she dismissed it. So what if it was cold? The filly nestled closer betwixt the wooden beams of her residence and closed her eyes tight in defiance. There was no time to worry about that now. And now it was time to sleep. Every filly knew the moon meant that, and even she didn't have the energy to fight its silent nocturne. Good night, Mom. Good night, Dad. I love you, she called out softly. The answer was the same every night. Silence. Only broken by the creaking of the aged structure warping with the change of season. The airy creaks of the empty room would have frightened most, but this was her clubhouse. Unknown to her two best friends, it had also been her home for several months now. Scootaloo curled herself, curled into herself, and tried to will herself to sleep before the cold could set in and keep her awake. Fitful hours passed before she hazy lapse into unconsciousness took her trembling body, and with a final exhale of steam rising from her mouth, she fell asleep. Sunrise had brought with it a new world. The tiny frost crystals had seemingly taken seed and overtaken the landscape. It was as if the world had been waiting too long for too little and suddenly allowed its need to flood the earth with a bone-chilling cold. Dawn cascaded through the foliage surrounding the small structure, the gentle rays illuminating everything but the tiny huddled figure in the farthest corner of its shelter. As early as it was, she would not expect any pony to be looking out for her. The gentle nudge that slowly brought her to consciousness came as a shock, and she started as her eyes snapped open and rose to meet the gaze of the mare looming over her. A yelp broke forth from her as she tried to push herself up to her feet and clamber back away from the stranger. "'What the hey? Who are you?' she cried, eyes widening as the adult took a step closer. As the surprise wore off, her tone turned to annoyance as she took note the sun had not even barely risen yet through the clubhouse window. What the hey, lady? Why'd you wake me up? The sun isn't even all the way up. 
Only then, taking back control of her situation, did the filly take a good look at the stranger. The mare looked like an alicorn, old and worn, far past even what Celestia looked like. Her pelt had faded drastically through age, and it had a dull luster of muted gray to it. Her wings hung low at her sides now, the feathers thin and barren, only soft down clinging to them. Her mane shone no stars or celestial decadence, but draped around her like a white cowl, solemn and straight. What took Scootaloo aback the most was the horn. It had been snapped in two, with thin hairline cracks running through it. They all fell to a point just past, just above her eyes. The saddest brown eyes that Scootaloo had ever seen that fixated down upon her. Meeting those eyes caused a lump to rise in her throat, and she struggled to swallow it before wrenching her gaze away and casting a sidelong glance at the alicorn. Who are you? Who are you, and why did why did you wake me up? The mare stood silent for a few moments more before she closed her eyes and bowed her head, shaking it slowly. Skulu, I'm so sorry, but how did you know my name? The mare winced at the outburst before stomping a hoof resolutely to silence the filly and continue. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I didn't wake you. You never woke up this morning. The tension in the air almost made her choke on the lump. Tears stung her eyes as she shook her head and took another step back. You're lying, she whispered, her voice unintentionally harsh as she continued to back away. It was then her hoof hit something solid. She expected the sound of it meeting wood, but it only made a dull thud as it collided with the object. Slowly she turned her head to see what it was. She felt ill as her heart filled deep into her stomach and she started, transfixed at the tiny bundle that lay there. It was wrapped in her cape. The visage was marred by the violet tendrils of its mane. It was her, and it wasn't breathing any more. Scootaloo stared down at herself silently. Regret fluttered her as thoroughly as the tears that slid down her face. There was so much I was going to do. I never found my special talent in life and earned my cutie mark. I never thought it would end like this. Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and I were all going to do it together. This is a nightmare. The thought quieted her. This was a nightmare, and that was all that it could be. She rounded on the mare, eyes narrowed. This is messed up, you know that? What gives you the right? Why? It had been countless centuries of the same question. The mare closed her eyes and thought for a moment, wondering how she still never had quite a good answer. After a moment, her eyes opened and extended one of her wings as if to beckon to the, the filly near. I wish I had a be better answer, but this isn't a nightmare, Scootaloo. You, you fell asleep and the temperature dropped so suddenly, there was nothing any pony could have done. As she spoke, she slowly came closer, the heartache in her eyes deepening as, as countless times before. The filly began to beg. No, she screeched, rearing and striking the mare with her front hooves. No, please, please, I'll be anything you want. I'll never break any of Rarity's form models. I'll never sneak cupcakes at Sugar Cube Corner. I'll even go back to the orphanage, please. The momentum in her voice waned to sobs as she felt her front legs collide with the old mare's body. The mare didn't cry out in pain or try to defend herself. What she did was much worse, and Scootaloo broke into fresh sobs as the mare tucked her wing over her broken body and lowered her head to gently nuzzle her muzzle. I'll do anything. Please. I don't want to die. Quiet dominated the small room. The only sounds were that of Scootaloo, quietly crying into the coat of the mare. Occasionally, the mare would softly shh or soothe her, but otherwise said nothing. The filly was right in that it was not fair. To have lived alone for so long and to perish alone without purpose to life was cruel. It was also why she was here. It was a long time before Scootaloo found her voice again, turning to look at her body. She addressed the mare. What happens now? She turned her gaze up at the ancient alicorn and tried to quell the tremor in her voice. Am I going to hell? I never... 
I never found my special purpose. I never did anything with my life. The last thing I did. She bit her lip and took a moment to collect herself again, fresh tears breaking. I told Apple Bloom I was going to be the first to find it, and we got into an argument. That's the last thing I ever said to one of my best friends. Scootaloo? The filly looked up at the mare, but it hadn't been that she had spoken. Her eyes widened as the sickening realization sunk in, and she turned to face the door. Apple Bloom stood there, and she could hear Sweetie Belle following not far behind. They had only just bounded in and hadn't spotted her yet. The yellow filly persisted, unaware of what had happened. Scootaloo, you sleepy slowpoke. Did you forget about the meeting today? S Sweetie Belle squeezed in and shot Apple Bloom a reproaching look before looking around the room. It was still only just morning, but finally she found her friend in the corner. There you are. Why are you still asleep? That's unusual for you, Scoot. Usually you're the first one up. Apple Bloom rolled her eyes and smiled. Guess I'm going to be the first to get my cutie mark then, huh, Scootaloo? She tossed her scarlet mane and grinned wider and approached her still sleeping friend. But seriously, you gotta get up now, Scoot. Only once she got close did she go quiet. That was enough to worry Sweetie Belle. Neither of her friends were, was ever this quiet normally. Apple Bloom? She queried, taking a step toward her. Her friend didn't say a word, but sank to her haunches. Eyes still transfixed on Scootaloo. The beginnings of panic started to sneak in, but she forced herself to move to her friend's sleeping form and gently placed a hoof on it. Scootaloo, it's time to get up. Ice met her touch. The velvety coat was now rigid and cold, and her frame hard from the onset of rigor mortis. Scootaloo, this isn't funny. Scootaloo, please get up. Wake up. Wake up, please. Her voice rose in volume and pitch as she began to shake her friend, screaming louder and louder to arouse, to arouse deaf ears that could not hear her. Finally, there were no words, just a wordless wail of horror and grief as she began to choke on her own tears. Then pain, pain erupted in her jaw and she reeled, stunned into silence. Apple Bloom stood over her, tears streaming down her face as she fought to regulate her breathing. She looked up at her silently but the question was almost audible in her face. Why? Apple Bloom took a deep breath before helping her to her feet and gently sitting her down. The emotions still ran too high for her to form words, but Apple Bloom had somehow found them. Stay here with Scootaloo. I'm going to go get my sister. Stay here j just in case... in case she... No, she couldn't lie to her only remaining friend. She couldn't paint a pretty picture with Scootaloo's blood to make it all better. She took a step back, then turned and ran, yelling back, Stay here! Sweetie didn't need to be told that now, not once or twice more. Turned back to look down at Scootaloo and lay down beside her, trying to warm her with the heat from her body. Hush now. C quiet now. It's time to, to lay your sleepy head she softly sang before breaking into tears anew. And all the while, Scootaloo hid her face in the mare's chest, unable to stand as her body convulsed with sobs. Far off, she could still hear Apple Bloom calling for help. She could still hear Sweetie Belle trying to wake her. Only then did she know that they could not, for she could never wake up again. The funeral was a modest affair. The town gathered up a collection, and the mortician was even kind enough to donate a simple black coffin for the sake of holding her. It almost didn't seem real as Scootaloo stared down into the open casket and examined the tiny bundle within. They had done a good job, she admitted. She still looked. She still only looked asleep, a small smile permanently hovering on her face from her final dream. Scootaloo turned away and cast her gaze to the sky, a sigh causing her to shudder. The weather team hadn't been able to clear the skies. Why, she didn't know. But the day was somber in its muted gray sky that occasionally rumbled with the softest rumbles of thunder. <sighs> it's time, Scootaloo. We should take our places. It was the mare who spoke, beckoning the filly away from the casket to stand beside it instead. She had positioned them to watch the approaching procession of friends and loved ones that heavily trod to the filly's final resting place. 
upon seeing Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle, accompanied by their sisters and their friends, Scootaloo turned to look up at the mare. You never did answer me in the clubhouse. What happens to me now? Is this it? The mare didn't speak for a moment, but instead gestured to the procession before explaining. When a life is lost before its time, and while it's still innocent of crime, judgment cannot be passed. There is never enough time to decide who you would have grown up to be or the choices you would have made, and death doesn't believe in punishing the innocent. She lowered her gaze to meet the filly and smiled sadly. Your life wasn't without purpose, though. You lived and you touched ponies' lives through simply being there. Time did not stand to wait for the pair. As the mare spoke, ponies came and went. Each had their own words, but only a precious few being heard. As Apple Bloom approached the coffin, the mare paused in her explanation. Applejack stood beside her younger sister and gently pulled her close, doing her best to offer comfort that would never be enough to fill the hurt. The little filly spoke with a seriousness that Scootaloo had never heard before, had never before heard her friend take upon any matter before. Even her own heart's desire in obtaining her cutie mark. You were never supposed to die, Scootaloo. You were one of my best friends, and I... You were like another sister to me. We were going to grow up together and find our special talent. And now I don't know if I can without you. I miss you, and I loved you. So even if I can't find my special talent, I'll keep looking for yours. You were so special, and I hope, if you can hear me... That you know I admired you. I'm sorry about the argument, so please forgive me. Cause I... I... Then the tears took her again and she was led away by her sister to piece back together a broken heart. As Apple Bloom was led away from the coffin, Scootaloo felt her composure beginning to slip. She bit down hard on her lip and willed herself to keep what little she had together. The mare noticed the filly struggling to handle the scene and allowed her to compose herself again before continuing her explanation. What happens now is this. Your death, much like life, is what you've decided it is. It is your choice to make what happens now. Yours to decide what your heaven will be. But please. Her voice faltered as she lowered her head, as though weighted down by the sorrows of the world. Once you choose, you can never go back. Your heaven can change, but you have to do it on your own. I can only help you the first time, so please, make your decision wisely. It was by that time that Sweetie Belle and Rarity had approached. The young filly looked up with a lost sort of heartache, unsure of what to do. Rarity only stroked back her sister's mane and turned to reach into a saddlebag she had brought to the procession. From within, she pulled out a garment designed for a young mare. It was a long, flowing cape lined with a shimmering gold of Celestia's sun. The rest was comprised of a rich, heavy scarlet velvet. In the middle was a much more intricate design. Three mares of all creeds joining in the center. The earth pony and the unicorn were mere silhouettes. Between them held the magnificent wings of a pegasus. Carefully, she draped it over the coffin and nodded to Sweetie Belle. Soft at first, the little filly began in low, trembling tones, but as she closed her eyes and turned her head to the heavens... Her voice grew louder and louder as she sang. I have not wings to follow you, and I know not where you go. I cannot fly to heaven far to ever let you know. But your wings were made for angels, irreplaceable in their worth. So goddesses have now taken an angel back from earth. The song dissolved in bitter tears as the former had. She was led away to recover in the company of her only surviving friend. It, it's not fair, she choked, furious at herself for collapsing back into the grief of her own death again. She scrubbed at her eyes and cursed herself before taking a deep breath and forcing herself to calm back down. Even after the touching words, she felt at a loss. Did they not understand? You are the best friends a girl could have. Sweetie Belle is more of an angel than, than I am. And Apple Bloom is just trying to be strong for her. It isn't fair. The crowd slowly dispersed as the hours ticked by. Scooloo watched as many of the adults she had known spoke in low, soft tones of their regret and sorrow. She watched as some lay down gifts and letters to a filly that most of them had never known. Was it guilt that drove them to this? She didn't know. 
She only watched as familiar and unfamiliar light gathered to say their goodbyes, and then she was all alone. Scootaloo could feel a dull ache in her chest as she sat there, waiting. Out of many faces, there had been one missing. I, I guess I wasn't, I wasn't really important to her. She began looking up at the mare who moved to sit beside her, offering only what she had to give, if only an ear to listen. Scootaloo continued as she looked up at the sky. I wanted to grow up to be just like her. She was the most amazing flyer in all of Equestria. She could break the sound barrier. She could move the world if she wanted to. But she didn't. A creak of protest interrupted her. The origin came from a rusted hinge at the funeral's gate, and two figures seemed to move at the edge of the haze that had begun in, to enshroud the gravesite. They seemed to speak to each other for a few minutes, one turned away only to be shoved by the other, gently but firm in its resolution, as one ushered her companion nearer. The voices began to materialize. I... I... C can't... Oh, Celestia, please, I can't d do this. Yes, you can. I know this is hard, and it's going to be hard for a little while longer, but if you don't do this, then you'll never get another chance. Please. The silhouettes began to become clear outlines, and Scootaloo's eyes widened as, finally, they stepped into visibility and approached the coffin. H hey kiddo, it, it, it's me. I just, oh, Scootaloo, I'm so sorry. The mare choked, a cry of anguish ripping itself from her heaving chest. Tears blinded her as she bowed her head and, and rested against the coffin. I'm so sorry, it, if... If I had known, I should have... I'm so stupid, Scoots. I should have seen w what was going on. You... You were the first filly to believe in me. You looked up to me. You... D depended on me. And I was so blind. It should have been me. She cried, beating the earth below her with her front hoof. It, it should have been me. I'm so sorry. I loved you, Scootaloo, and... I never t told you that. It didn't have to be this way. And it's my fault. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Scootaloo. It was then Fluttershy I tucked her wing around her friend and held her close. It was disturbing in its way. Scootaloo could find no words for what she saw before her. The strongest flyer in Equestria now bowed before her, broken and inconsolable by even her closest friend. She had never seen Rainbow cry before. She had never even known if the confident mare was capable of allowing herself that relief. That didn't matter to her anymore. Scootaloo had mattered. Now it was too late. Yet at the same time, Scootaloo couldn't bring herself to anger. She had been angry at times, yes. Why had no one ever looked for her? Why had her parents failed to take care of her? Why had Rainbow never once asked if everything was okay with her home life, or known that there had never been a home for her to go back to? In life, those things had made her angry. Now only they made a d now they only made a deep sigh well within her as she wished she could tell Rainbow her true feelings. <sighs> she had never blamed any of them for what had happened, and she never would. They never needed to ask for forgiveness because they were never blamed. But how could they know? How could they hear a voice from a mouth that would never move again? Fluttershy did her best to console Rainbow for the time that passed so slowly. Finally, after a moment in eternity that lasted what seemed forever, Rainbow got up. The mare silently pulled out something she had tucked beneath her wings, placing it on the coffin and whispering a final goodbye before turning to leave with Fluttershy at her side. Once they had finally gone, Scooloo brought herself to look at it. It wasn't a second longer before she couldn't look at it anymore and turned away. The crown of Equestria's best young flyer had been placed over the cape Rarity had left behind. It had been Rainbow's pride and joy. It had been her happiness and inspiration. Now it was only a memory they would never share, and a broken dream. She would never get to see her fly, so there was no reason to wait for the next best flyer, her flyer, that had never gotten to soar. As they reached the gate to the funeral, Rainbow stopped one last time to cast a glance back at what could have been. She couldn't see Scootaloo staring back at her, nor could she see anything more through the tears that blinded her. 
Now truly alone, the air was silent. The filly and the mare sat together there for a long time, the filly staring off into a nothingness that stretched endlessly before her. There were endless possibilities now to fill the void of all that she would never grow up to realize. Mm. The destination of heaven now loomed to replace the journey of life to reach it. There was no hurry to get there. She had all the time in the world now. The mare knew this just as well as she did, and did not move to disturb the filly's thoughts. Days passed in the course of those thoughts, and Scoodlu uttered not a word. She sat there perfectly still, staring sadly into forever that merely stared back. Tears would occasionally brim and flow down her features, but even those waned and ended as time passed. Finally, on the first morning of winter, she spoke. I've decided. The words came from absolute silence. The mare stared at the sudden resolution in su is such a young filly's voice, but listened to hear what she had deemed worthy of heaven. Over thousands of years, she had heard and seen many different heavens. Sometimes the heaven would be one of who chose to become a god and rule forever in their own domain. Sometimes the heaven would be a fantasy they had never gotten to fulfill. Then sometimes it would simply be to never want or need for anything again and to simply join their loved ones when their time came, living in paradise for all eternity. <sighs> Skulu continued, pushing herself up and bracing for whatever was going to come next. I know what I want, so now what? While the mare found it odd, she did not simply speak it and let it be. She nodded and turned to, to stare into forever once more. Will it to be? But be sure there isn't any going back after this. Do you understand? Scootaloo only nodded and closed her eyes. This was her heaven. This was her final wish. The world felt like it had exploded around her. Suddenly, needles of ice punctured her lungs. The metallic taste of blood tinged her lips, and for some reason she was burning alive. In the distance she could hear sirens wailing and terse, anxious voices barking out orders, and even choppy directions. None of them made any sense, and she was being eaten from the inside out with fear. Scootaloo struggled to even remember what had happened that led to this. Her thoughts were sluggish, and she couldn't seem to collect them. Only once the world came to a shuddering halt did she realize she was in an ambulance. Before she could invest in the thought, she felt herself slip from consciousness and she was plunged into complete darkness. It didn't last long, or it didn't seem to. What felt like seconds later she opened her eyes and tried to sit up, with a start. Her entire body was convulsing and trembling, but she could feel her heartbeat raging away within her frail chest. A strong set of hooves pushed her gently back down as she tossed her head wildly to see who was confining her. The will to fight disappeared. Rainbow did did dash she managed her teeth chat clattering so hard she quickly gave up on attempting more than that. The mare looked down at her with tears in her eyes, but was smiling despite be being just as scared as the filly. Calm down, kiddo, take it easy for me. That's right, that's my girl. A nurse entered the room, followed by their familiar faces. Scootaloo, oh scoot, are you okay? Both of them were pulled away by their older sisters as the rest of the visitors filed in slowly. Apple Bloom, she's got a rest now. Your friend had a pretty close call. For once, Rarity agreed, pulling Sweetie Belle close to her. I should say so. Why did you girls never tell us she had been living in that tiny little clubhouse? Both of the fillies lowered their heads, guilt surging within their voices. We never knew. I, I never asked. As the nurse administered the vital warmth the young Pegasus needed, the trembling began to subside. Slowly she found her voice and used it now to say the hardest thing she ever brought herself to. It wasn't their fault. It, it's mine. I was ashamed. I was scared of being taken back to the orphanage, if any pony knew. So, I... I lied to every pony. I was scared of saying goodbye. The room went quiet as it sunk in. She could see on each of their faces that they could not bring themselves to simply accept that answer. I should have known. I should have done something. Although unspoken, Skulu could see in their faces. Only one of them spoke aloud, but it was not what she expected to hear. I'm leaving. This is something I should have done a long time ago. Her eyes widened as she turned to face the voice of her mentor. R Rainbow Dash, no, please! 
the sudden distress caused by her breathing to hitch the sudden distress caused her breathing to hitch and she was taken by a fit of coughing without being able to say another word she could only watch as the pony she looked up to the most got up and left the room the action had taken even her friends aback Fluttershy rushed after her to see what was the meaning of the outburst the others merely talked amongst themselves frightened of further upsetting the delicate health of the filly they took it gradually outside leaving Scootaloo alone with the nurse even her closest friends had been dragged away to leave her this had to be a nightmare. Nurse Redheart frowned, her eyes filled with a quiet symp sympathy. She tried to lift her patient's spirits as she continued to work on gradually reintroducing warmth back into her tiny body. I'm sure there's just a misunderstanding, dear. Your friends are just outside discussing important things right now, but I'm sure they'll be back to visit you once you're stable. The word caused Skulu to break from her sad reverie and realize that her body still felt as though it was overly warm. W what happened? Nurse Redheart stopped and considered whether it was a wise idea telling the filly of how close a call she'd had. Delicately, she tried to make it so she would understand. Sweetheart, they couldn't wake you up. After your friends went home, I think one of them got worried and said something to their sister about not having seen you outside of that little clubhouse for some time. It was enough to call a search party, and about an hour ago, Rainbow Dash found you curled up on the floor. She couldn't wake you, so she flew for help. If she hadn't found you, you wouldn't be here right now. She then moved close and tucked in the thick blanket close around the tiny Pegasus's wings. They call it hypothermia. The temperature dropped so suddenly and you were only wrapped in a thin blanket. You got too cold too quickly and it's very dangerous. I can honestly say that I'm grateful you're alive and awake to be here right now. Scootaloo had said nothing but rolled over. It was so much to take in. It was so much to handle and she was so exhausted. The nurse didn't disturb her any more with the rest of the details, but the mare did lean down to gently kiss the top of her head. Get some sleep. Good night, Scootaloo. The nurse walked to the door and gave one look back before turning off the lights and shutting it quietly, leaving the little filly to fall into fitful slumber. Morning brought with it a new world. Scootaloo slowly opened her eyes and took a deep breath, grateful her lungs had stopped burning. The room came into focus gradually and she found herself staring at something foreign. Rainbow Dash had come in sometime during the night and fallen asleep. The mare was curled up on a small sofa in the corner of the room, surrounded by flowers and gifts her friends had asked her to bring. The morning light caused her to stir and a soft groan drifted from her as she opened her wings and stretched. It was then she noticed Scootaloo watching and she moved to the bedside. Good morning. Scootaloo lowered her gaze and braced herself for the lecture she was sure was coming. Rainbow Dash had not had been woken up in the middle of the night to go look for her in the cold. She had to deal with her stupidity at not knowing better, for not being more careful. She could hear the fear she could hear her fears as loudly as if they had already been spoken, and dreaded the stark reality that she had woken up to. The world was about to change. The words never came though. Rainbow didn't launch into a long-winded lecture or start yelling at the filly. She did not scream at her about how stupid and useless she had been, nor how the unloved should be shut away. Instead, a gentle hoof took her own, and Rainbow spoke quietly. I'm sorry about last night. I was angry at myself. I've done a lot of stupid things. I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm going to try and start fixing them, though, starting right now. Scootaloo. She gently took the filly's chin and made her look up at her. Rainbow smiled and took a deep breath before finishing what she had begun. How would you feel about about moving in with me? How about me adopting you? Last night made me think about a lot of things, long and hard. I was so scared of losing you. We all were. So if you want to, if you can forgive me for being so slow, you never have to be alone again. You can come home. It took a few seconds before it sank in, but the filly answered without words. Tears brimmed, hot and unbidden with joy as a relieved sob broke from her and she hugged Rainbow as tightly as she could. The mare didn't push her away. She would never push her away, and she would never wake up alone. This is the beginning of the rest of your life, kiddo. I promise to make it an adventure as long as I can. Through the tears, she opened her eyes... Through the tears, she opened her eyes. She could see the apple bloom and Sweetie Belle standing there, 
both of them just as overwhelmed as she was with emotion. Behind them their sisters and the other mare stood, all relieved and thankful that the nightmare had ended. All of them were there, and for a moment someone she didn't recognize. It had been an old gray mare passing by with a smile on her face. She was there and gone, leaving the filly to the happy moment. Later that day, the adoption papers were signed and officiated. Scooloo was released from the hospital a few days later. As she walked out with her new guardian by her side, an old gray mare watched from the hospital window. Sad brown eyes closed, and a tear slid down her cheek to meet her smile. The filly would never again see her, but she would remember her. She would be the one who chose all the pains and sorrows of life that, so that every moment of happiness and joy was her own little piece of heaven that she would never have to wake up from again. And that is the end of the story. <laughs> uh, oh my god. I thought The Last Crusade was the saddest thing I ever read in my life, but... That... That... Wow. I have my hand on my chest right now to make sure my heart's still beating. Holy crap, that was... Oh my god, that was an... That story damn near killed me. That... The third chapter, I almost couldn't finish that third chapter. I'll be honest with you folks. I almost couldn't finish that third chapter. I almost broke into tears near the end. And I've been holding back tears since the fourth chapter started. But I'm glad this ended the way, not the way I thought it was going to end. I'm glad it didn't end that way. Oh my god. <sighs> That is, that is an amazingly written story, and uh, I would like to thank the writer. The author is the author, according to FIM Fiction. Oh no, this is on Equestria Daily. My bad. The author is well. The author's ah. The author is from Donna DonnaDracane.DeviantArt.com. So thank you, Donna. You wrote an amazing story. And <laughs> I don't often thank authors for writing such amazing stories, but Donna, you you took the cake, and I write, and I raised my can of Dr. Pepper to you. If I had a real drink, I would raise that to you, but this is all I got, so... God, nothing, no movie, no song, no TV show, no book has ever wrenched and tore my heart out like that. I, 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 oh my God. <sighs> I am now going to go quietly cry myself to sleep. Actually, I'm probably going to st still be up for another two hours and twenty minutes but I'm going to go somewhere and cry now which is something I don't do but <laughs> this story man <sighs> so I will so until next time folks I will see you later on the next edition of Run Double Run 007 Reads thanks for sitting through this and good night